have you ever used Camtasia or another video editor to create your own custom animated GIFs? In this video, you're going to walk through a few great example creations, and you'll learn some very cool tips on how to create your own animated GIFs from video clips that you shoot. Let's dive in. Hey, it's Gord here, and welcome. If it's your first time here and it's your passion to make great videos, become a ninja at video editing and learn more tips on how to succeed with video and marketing on YouTube, then make sure you hit the subscribe button and click the bell notification icon so you don't miss a thing. So here's a first example of an animated GIF, and it's one that I added into my YouTube community tab. I don't know if you know this, but in the YouTube community tab, you can't add in a video, but you can add in an animated GIF. So this is one of the ones we're going to be looking at an example that I created something to celebrate the new year. So it's nicely embedded here in the message. And I've got another one that I did inside my uh, YouTube channel. And it's also on the community tab, which this was an animated gift that I created when I got access to the community tab and wanted to share it with people and send out a nice little message. So we're going to also see how to create this one in a little bit. So now I want to go on a little further for you to see how people are using them. So as you can see here, we're in Facebook and this one posting here has an animated gif of, uh, you know, someone really putting a cool emotional expression of um, focus while gaming and you can see it loops. And, um, you know, it's com the, the animated GIFs are commonly used in social media postings. Next, I showed you earlier this animated GIF that I created. It can be embedded in an email. So here I'm going to just send out a New Year's wish to my friend Ben. And all I did was drag and drop the animated GIF in here, and it functions great. It's a nice and lean, small file. And then uh, a next example is in something that's not so commonly heard of, but it's called micro learning. And this is a page in TechSmith's uh, site where you can see that they're showing you a demonstration of how to animate titles with behaviors. And all of a sudden you see here on the left side, there are a few uh, um, images here, which are actually animated GIFs, which are assisting you in understanding the steps. So you can visually confirm how to put certain things on, expand the boxes, shrink, etc. So this is very helpful in learning so that you can, you know, let a, that, that the animated GIF tell a lot about what's happening. And then you have the text to the right to complement it. Similarly, something I'm going to share in a future video. This is another example of micro learning. I'm carrying you through the process of the production wizard that uh, you go through to create your animated gift, which is something we're going to look at in a bit. So this is just, a, a, you know, a file that was created a GIF, and it loops and um, I would have some text accompanying it, and it shows you the whole process to produce your animated GIF. Another common use that people um, create animated GIFs for are things like cinemagraphs. As you can see here, most of this picture is static, with the exception of the moving water. And uh, here's a few other pictures. You can see here the fans moving in this picture, but the rest of it is kind of still. And here's another one showing you with a set of glasses and, and someone putting a little stir in their, uh, looks like a latte or an espresso. And I go one step further. I actually, which we'll also share in a future video, I, I use um, animated GIFs with a green screen background and use remove a color and I can add them as additional elements on my videos. So you see the little head of Bart Simpson here, that's actually an animated GIF done on a green background. So just another cool technique. Of course, there are tools out on the web like Giphy where you can go in and uh, upload a video and trim it and, and you know, the front and back and add captions and stickers and do whatever you'd like. But now we're going to see how you can go in using a video editor like a, like Camtasia and create your own. So let's dive in. For our first example, I wanted to get an expression of wow, of surprise to, you know, and have a nice five, six second clip. And I decided to use my smartphone to record this. It's at 1920 by 1080p. And I used my gimbal and did a track motion with some facial expression. And I got this cool clip. 
Now that clip is 30 seconds and I wanted to reduce it down to just, you know, five, six seconds in the end. So I restricted what I was going to use to the, to the area where I had, you know, the actual emotional expression and action. So that's, you know, contained into this area. So I've put the markers on here. So I'm going to select this clip to press the S key to split it, get rid of the front portion and then click the end marker and then uh, do a split there as well and then get rid of the end portion. Now I'm left with just the clip piece that I need. I'm gonna get rid of this marker here, I don't need it anymore. But I know that where that ends, because I'm going to be using some text annotations, I want to sort of extend the frame of this expression so that when the text that comes on at the end, it, you know, it stays on a little longer. You know, we always gotta consider the timing, even though we wanna have a nice tight uh, file size in our end result, we need to be considerate of that. So to extend the frame on the end here, you just need to go to the end of the track, okay, put your mouse over, press the Alt key, and drag to the right. And you can see we have this stitched line and we have an extended uh, piece here which gives the frozen part of the frame. And you're gonna hear the first part, it has audio in it. You can hear that sound and then it gets quiet. And in any event, when we produce our GIF, there, there's no sound there because GIF has no sound, the animated GIF. So now um, to, to tune this further, I'm just gonna jump to this sort of next block here to show you kind of what I did. So we're gonna stretch this out a little, move over. And what I did here is I ultimately had to add uh, a clip, sp clip speed, and you can see it went to 1.34 times in that piece. And here's the image piece at the end, and that correlates to exactly what we have here. But in order to manipulate that, you're going to have to go and you're going to need to split here where you saw that stitching. And you can do that one way, which was I just put my mouse over uh, the track here. I don't want a marker. That's a little mistake. Then I click the right mouse and I do unstitch. And that kind of separated the piece. And then that allows us to easily go over into the visual effects, grab clip speed and toss that on. The effect is added. And then as you saw here in our finished product, I had clip speed of about 1.34. So I could just go in here and that's easily done by grabbing the bar here and then look at the number on the top till I get about to 1.34, that's approximate. And then the image uh, here, the image part had a duration of 1.18, so one second, 18 frames. So we can approximate that here as well. I'm gonna click here and extend the size of that to be 1.18 in terms of frame length. There we go. So there you go. You can see this is like, you know, basically the finished clip in terms of what we want to, to have with the video and the image. And it's just, you know, in the area of five seconds. That's what our, our end product is. So now, I, I, after I've sort of played with that, I also put in our text annotations. And the text annotations, if you look here, you can see the properties here on the right for the call out. There's a shape in the background right here, which has a border. And you can see the properties down here. You can look at that more closely if you stop the, uh, the video. And then there's the text here. Likewise, it's just the word wow. And, you know, nothing fancy. We just have the drop shadow effect there and the drop shadow and border, okay? And it's pretty clean and simple. And likewise, similar properties here. Again, you can stop and look and see what's there on both of these items, okay? That's if you wanna go see the details on how I put in the text annotations. But now we need to render a bunch of outputs to see how small we can get the file to be useful and have the visual effect without getting you know too diluted in terms of the smoothness of the action that we want to see so that's pretty simply done what we do is we highlight the whole clip which means includes the video and our um, image part and that the text annotations and then i can go right mouse button produce timeline selection as and in the production wizard we want to choose custom production settings, next, and then be sure you've selected GIF animation file. And then 
you know, you're going to do a bunch of iterations, again, like I said, playing with different frame rates and dimension sizes, the dimensions you're going to see in a second. So let's say this one I tried for 10, 10, uh, frame, 10 frames per second. And then next here, I want to maintain my aspect ratio. And I know in the final size for the 10 frames per second, I kind of trimmed that down to be about 480 there by 270. And then we go next, and then next again, and then we would produce a file here with, with a name. So, and then I press finish or enter, same result, and it produces our animated GIF. Okay, so now you can see how that's done. Let's look at a picture here, a few pictures that are going to help explain things a little more clearly for you. So as you can see, I mentioned, I created a number of iterations and each time you create one, it creates a folder wherever you decide to place it. And there's a video file with an associated size. So I just showing you here, the 10 frames per second one based on 480 by 270 produces a file of three megabytes. Now, if I had taken this original the original video clip and shot it at a lower resolution or used it as a source file as a slower resolution, I would get smaller file sizes in the end result of the animated GIF that I produce. But this just gives you an idea of, you know, that you're going to go through a variety of iterations. And when you do each iteration, you're going to look at the smoothness, look at the file size, test it out, see how it looks when you toss it in something like, uh, a social feed like on Facebook or embed in an email to be the see that the sizing looks okay and the fluidity. You know, you just want to check those variables out. So this is to give you an idea of what goes on with the file size. And then I put one more picture together here for you just to help summarize things up. And you can see here, uh, I show you, uh, show you here that I tried a variety of dimension sizes. As you saw when we had the production wizard, we can vary the sizes. So I, there were three different sizes tried here with the lowest one down to 480 by 270. And as you can see, the original file size was 30 seconds. The clip, we trimmed it down to about five. And the smallest one I went to was at three frames per second and gave a, an end size file of one megabyte. All of these things contribute to shrinking the file size. We always want to aim for a nice lean file size. And the last iteration I did got me down to one megabyte in size and a frame rate of three frames per second. So now just to give you an idea, you saw earlier in, in um, the image that we produce a file output for each one of these. So what I did in my media bin here is I added back I, I, I've dragged into the, uh, to the media bin for those samples. So you can see the fluidity and then get a sense of the, the experience. So here we are in the first one here that I have. And if I mouse over here, you can see this is 30 frames per second at the size of 960 by 540. And you're going to see this runs pretty smooth. Again, no sound. See how nice and smooth it is and the time for the text to be read. And then in the second example here, I went down to 10 frames per second, but still with that same size dimension. So you can see it's a little more jittery, but still quite good. And then in the next iteration here, you know, I just brought four in to give you an example. So this size is now 10 frames per second, but you can see the dimension size has gone down, which will also shrink the file size. So same performance in terms of the fluidity. Now, again, you would embed this GIF file in and see if the sizing works for you as an end result. And then if you wanted to go one step further to see what would happen with the frame rates, I put this last example together, which was just three frames per second. And look at the difference in how it looks to be a little more jittery. And, you know, again, you need to decide if, if that's what you're looking for in terms of the fluidity of the end result. So here we go. See, it's a little more choppy but that may be sufficient if that's what you desire. And there you have it. That's the end of our first example. Now on to example two. For this second example, we're going to take a much quicker look. I took an example here from Facebook Messenger and I added filters and, you know, played with the coloring and got this nice Happy New Year's animated characterization of me looking all excited. And here it is play, playing it. 
And as you can see, it says Happy New Year's. And the Happy New Year's is something that I added in my own text here. And as you can see on the, on the right side here, there's drop shadow um, effect added. It's the same in each of the pieces. And you can see the attribute details here in terms of what I tuned up. And then on the actual main part, there's been color adjustment because it's saturated and it looks, you know, really rich. And that's what I wanted to achieve. And just a general comment here, um, I could have, you know, just as easily done the Happy New Year's text animation pieces if I wanted to in Messenger or put other stickers, other features and, you know, animation elements in Facebook uh, Messenger. But the whole point was when you come into your own, own editor, you know, something like Camtasia or, or whatever else you may use, you can do all the tweaking and tuning you want and timing and play with it. You know, it's less forgiving if you put it in, in the source. So I, I did this because I knew I wanted to cut pieces out of the video clip that, you know, the original piece in order to come up with the flow that I have here. So this finished product here is three and a half seconds, but the original clip, which is right here, is over six seconds. So just, you know, to give you an idea, I did some trimming. So the front piece was cut out from the front here and then the back piece from the end here. And then we had a little section in the middle, which is kind of like, uh, I'm calling it a cutout. And that cutout piece, if we go here, I'm gonna just highlight it for you. Bring the head playhead back, highlight it for you, and then play it and you'll see my head's nodding and there's nothing really going on there. So that's wasted time. So that point was cut out and you know, now I'll just do a, the, the quick edit to see, so you can see how I got that reduced. And there you have it. This is the the clip that I used to the right. It's approximately uh, three, you know, a little over three seconds. And just to summarize, so people can see what I did to come up with this one, I originally started with a clip that was the size of 992 by 1920, and that came out of Facebook Messenger. What's interesting here is that it had 24 frames per second you know, not 30 frames per second, like in our last example, which was something I recorded on my cell phone. Now I did a bunch of iterations for this example, like I did for the first one. And as you can see, generally the file sizes go down with the exception of this one here. So even though I cut the dimension size down and cut to 15 frames per second, I had an increase here and that's because I added color adjustments and the annotations. So we actually enhanced the original video clip by adding those things in. So just bear in mind that, you know, you work to get a finished product that's lean, not too big a file size, that works right visually, has the right emotion and impact that you want. And in our case, you know, you could get down to, if you wanted to at three frames per second, 665 KB, or one megabyte at, at five uh, frames per second. Anyways, we don't need to go through and play those animated GIFs again, because uh, you've seen the example of the finished product. And I just wanted to share with you how easy it is to create your own custom animated GIFs. And of course, with other tools, there are other parameters you can change, like bit rate, color depth, and other, other details, but this was a great example of how you can create custom animated GIFs inside Camtasia. Wow, as you can see, the animated GIFs are pretty easy to create and there are so many uses for them. In another video soon, I'm going to show you how to make a few micro learning GIF assets. This will be very useful for those in the education and training space to add another dimension to training content. If you need any assistance with editing and producing your videos for YouTube, video marketing, and training or course production, be sure to reach out to me through my website, gordeisman.com. See you in another video soon.